So there's the perfect lead in. So, um, tell me about your your experience and yeah, what, what, what's your path? What's been your path personal journey? Yeah. Well, forget. I like always like cooking. Okay. When I was younger. I was probably about like ten-ish when I learned how to cook from my parents, my grandparents, stuff like that. Cool. And uh, just kind of developed a passion for it. Things that are important to me are like sustainability, farm to table, all that. And I actually recently finished school, finally. Only took me like 10 years. <laughs> I got my bachelor's in culinary arts and sustainable uh, practices. So last year we were able to win a slow food award here, which is their kind of the accreditation unit of uh, restaurants with sustainability. Okay. So, you know, majority of our produce, all of our proteins from the state of Virginia, Maryland, Pennsylvania. If we can't get it local, then it's sourced from a responsibly, responsible farm. And actually, I have a little farm at my house. I live eight miles from Shenandoah National Park. Wow. So I live far away from here. Wow. But yeah, we got a little under 10 acres, and we have chickens, getting goats, got a bunch of you know, vegetables planted, we got bees, wow. all that stuff. So cool. We're trying to do the whole sustainable, my wife and I. So Good for you, man. Thing. And actually live it. You're living it. Yeah. It's not just. No, no, it's, it's not, not just, just a show. degree. No. <laughs> I mean, this it's something that's passionate about. Like, we here at the Tavern, Caboose Tavern, we try to embody the Appalachian cuisine. And that's very different than Southern cuisine. It's very different than New England style and all that. What encompasses Virginia best is the Appalachian Trail. Because that was the original internal spice trade of our country. Because that's where the railroad was parallel to. That was what everyone explored from and use that as the, the, the baseline uh -huh. to go out. Yeah. What are some of those staple items? I mean, it's... In the Appalachian. I mean, it's a lot of beans, a lot of yeah. potatoes, right. uh, braising greens, like collards, right. chard, stuff like that. Uh, pawpaw, which is like naturally occurring here. Wine berries, which are like a variant of a raspberry that are wild. You know, lots of heavy meat dishes, lots of salt curing. Virginia ham is very popular. Yep what Virginia's kind of known for. Yep. They were not really very affluent areas right. down in the hollers. So they did what they could to maximize what they had. So like, you know, they'd shuck the beans and keep the shells and then braise those down separately. Right. You know, because they'd spend all day picking, picking yeah. the peas out. That's, like, that's what would be something interesting to somebody who is a regular that, you know, maybe they've tried, like for me, yeah. I've tried the vanilla bean hobo style. Yeah. That's my favorite. Um, yeah, I love it. Yeah. Uh, high alcohol, alcohol content, you can't go wrong. Um, you know, what, what, what I mean, can you... Let's say the stout, for instance, that tends to be popular and it's kind of one of our little... What makes us kind of unique because we use real vanilla. And stouts are typically characterized as heavy beers. Ours isn't as heavy in body as you would imagine in a lot of contexts. Right. It's actually almost more malty and sweet than most stouts. Right. And the vanilla helps bring it out and use that earthiness. So when we actually this year were able to throw it in whiskey barrels to really enhance that whiskey flavor. I believe it was dickle barrels we used. And I think that vanilla combo with the whiskey, which is a classic combination, but it worked really great. Yeah. And that was kind of What is your narrative to the purist? The beer purist, because I mean, you see a lot of. I'm more of a beer purist. I don't like all the fancy stuff typically right. in my beer. Yeah, but like, it's like the, to me, that's like a baseline. That's sure. what beer is. Right. It just gets better and worse from there. Right. Is it the best beer? No, but it's that baseline. It's like I just want a neutral, sure, easy to drink beer. It's like a I feel like we cover that well because we cover our bases when we have like our staples, like our Vienna Lager, our uh, Fog, our Citra, and our Wasser Pilsner. I mean, granted, we have. Been, uh, brown ale. Granted, we have much more staples than that, but those are, I feel like, the major categories that people seek out, and we have a solid version of all those as they are. But then we do offshoots, we do sours, we do porters, we do all sorts of stuff, but those are, I feel like, the main categories that people look for, and we, I think we hit the nail on the head and just having a good, simple, well, it's actually complex, but <laughs> simple in perception, like, wow, this is just a good lager, like, you don't think past it, which is actually, I think, a good thing. That's what you want. Yeah. You don't want to be like, you know, people can dissect it all they want. They can overthink it. People love that. That's their thing. Go for it. But right. sometimes you just want a nice cold beer and hang out with friends and maybe eat a, or eat a burger. Or and so, and but here we are, and you've got, you've got here, they've got the other location. Yeah. Is there anything coming down the pike? I mean, that we can there's look been talks to? of okay. uh, Caboose Three. But sure. 
Sure. Got you it. know, we all we're like, oh, let's do this again, and then we look back about, like, oh wow, no, <laughs> it's good. a lot of I stress. like sleep. Yeah, yeah. yeah.